Catherine's report about radio, telephones, and romance. Hmm? It's a paradox of our times that as populations increase, intimacy between individuals seems to decrease. Well, here's a new attempt to bring us together. Last minute primping on your part, perhaps, that you must do there. Ready yourself to make the best impression possible. As and you have yourself, what color hair and eyes, John? Brown eyes, black curly hair. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, you are a working engineer. Yeah. With a substantial income. Ever been married? No. Uh-huh. John. I like girls that are intelligent and hardworking. Uh, slim. Slim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. This is what love has come to in Buffalo, New York. It's a radio talk show called Desperate and Dateless. It has had a surprising uh, popularity, and um, it has apparently tapped the imagination of uh, Buffalo's romantically inclined in that uh, the phone never stops ringing, even commences ringing well before we're on the air. So John Otto is the host of Desperate and Dateless. Shane, the cosmic cowboy, is the co-host, and here's how it works. People who want dates call John and Shane at radio station WGR on Thursday nights and tell them the essences of their spiritual beings. I'm good, like, um, I have a Dolly Parton figure. A Dolly Parton figure? Yes. I'm going to find out here If you're listening to the program and you hear an essence you like, you call the WGR control room. Now, and you'll be given the phone number of the Dolly uh, Parton figure, or whomever. It's up to John and Shane to help match listeners and callers by asking the callers insightful questions. I want to ask you a question. Now, let us suppose that tonight, a nice guy called up on the telephone. You liked the way he sounded. You made a date. And you offer him a cup of coffee, and he rips your dress off. Okay. My gosh, it sounds, okay. like, sounds like he tore the wallpaper off. <laughs> yeah. Desperate but Dateless has been on the air in Buffalo for only about three months now, so it's a little too early to judge its efficacy. We can, however, tell you this about it. There is in the Buffalo Evening News a column called The Single Life. It appears once a week, and it's written by a young lady named Barbara Snyder. Well, a few weeks ago, Miss Snyder did, as I'm doing tonight. She came to the desperate but dateless studio to report on the program. However, whereas I have managed to keep my journalistic detachment, Miss Snyder fell in love with one of the callers. The reporter became a satisfied customer. One of the neat things about the show is that people can meet each other over the telephone and they never have to see each other. They don't ju judge each other on looks first. They judge each other on conversation. Here is why he loves her. She is a strong-minded, vivacious young woman. Here is why she loves him. He makes more money than me. <laughs> and here is an extreme case. When's the last time you went out? Oh, about three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. Has it really been three long years? Time. This woman is a long, long time ago, uh, Coach. <laughs> yeah. It is the advantage of radio that everyone is attractive on the air. Yeah, beauty is in the ear of the beholder, we like to think. And so it is that nights at least sound a little less lonely now in Buffalo, New York. And in Boston, Providence, about six cities in the country have shows like this. It is the newest thing in love. I guess the only problem is when you look in the mirror, are you seeing what's really there? The lady said she had a Dolly Parton figure. I mean, that can mean two arms, two legs, and one head. I mean, a whole compliment. It's very innocent. It's not what she meant. Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up at 8 o'clock, the latest news. And we'll talk to an Israeli Arab who uh, covers the West Bank for Israeli...